Hey, what's up guys? We're going to do a quick comparison between the Smith & Wesson m and and the Glock pistol. I know a lot of people are probably trying to choose between both these pistols. Some of you may be new shooters looking for more information. So I will compare both these pistols and share my experience with them. I do have over 20 years experience with the Glock. I do not have as much with the Smith & Wesson m and Before we start, this is the newest m and 2.0 compact. That comes with their new style, their newer style trigger, the optic plate system, and the suppressor sights. This is a Gen 4 Glock that's been milled out by Jaeger Works, and I did some stippling on it. I do not have a stock Glock, unfortunately. For the sake of this video, we're going to pretend this is just an MOS Glock. We'll start off by talking about the slides, in particular the optics cut. You get a plate system on the MOS Glock, and you get a plate system on the newer MMPs. I do like the optic cut a little bit better on the MMP, even though the optic plate is plastic. You have one set of screws that you use, and they drilled from the top of the slide down to the bottom. So with the appropriate size screws, you can use very long ones and get a lot of thread engagement. On the Glock, you do not get as much thread engagement, and you will have to use two sets of screws. One going from the optic to the plate, the other going from the plate to the slide. But the optic plate on the Glock is metal so just wanted to put that out there <clears throat> there are aftermarket options by CNH Precision that are definitely an upgrade for both these pistols on the Glock you usually get their plastic sights I have upgraded these to Amerigo suppressor sights but you do usually get plastic sights and I always change them because they will wear down over time and I've broken off the rear sight before racking the slide off my belt on the MMP, you will get metal suppressorite sights. They are three dot sights and they are definitely adequate. They work just fine and you can co witness or use them as backup sights. The serrations on the Glock Gen 5, you will get front and rear serrations. They look just like this. They're just straight up and down vertical serrations. On the MMP, you also get front and rear serrations they are more of a, at an angle and they are a little bit more aggressive on the MP, but both of them are perfectly adequate and they work just fine on the generation 5 you do get their marksman barrel which has a small crown right here so that is pretty cool the MP you don't have a crown barrel but it sits flush with the front of the slide so i do like that you have somewhat of a loaded chamber indicator on both of these pistols. On the Glock, if there's a round in the chamber, your extractor would stick up past the slide. Right now, there is no round in the chamber, obviously, so the extractor is flush with the slide. On the MMP, if you had a round in the chamber, you would be able to see it right in that hole right there. <clears throat> we'll talk about the frames. The texture on the MMP is definitely more aggressive than the Glock. It's pretty grippy and I do like it. You do have four replaceable back straps like these to replace your back straps. You just remove the magazine and you would twist and pull out this tool right here and replace your back strap. And this is actually a tool you can use for some disassembly of the pistol. So that is pretty cool. On the Glock you have four back straps that you can add to your Glock if you want to. You would just take out this small pin, put your back strap on, and they give you a larger pin to put through. I usually do not run a back strap or I cut one of these beaver tails off and just use the beaver tail. But this is not the stock uh, texture. I did stipple this. The stock texture just looks like this, just a bunch of little square bumps, and it does work fine. It's just not as aggressive as the MMP. The MMP slide stop is a little bit extended. That is pretty cool if you want to use it as a slide release. The Glock is not extended. On the Gen 5, you will get an ambidextrous slide stop. On the MMP 2.0, you do get an ambi slide stop. Both the magazine buttons are reversible, so if you're left-handed and you want to put it to the other side, you can reverse them easily. The Glock is a little bit larger than the MMP. The MMP is a little bit more egg-shaped, and it's kind of angled off, if you can see, but they both work just fine. I don't really have a preference. They both work great. The MMP magazines are metal, though, which I do appreciate, actually. The Glock are polymer, but they have a metal lining. Uh, the MMP base plate can be taken off easier. You just stick a punch there and push it in and pop it off. The Glock 
you would have to do the same thing but usually you would want to get a Glock tool like this so you can pry it off a little bit easier because there are tabs right here on each side of the magazine. The Glock magazines are a little bit more inexpensive to buy so it is nice being able to buy cheaper magazines and the Glock magazines work very well. I've never had an issue with either magazines except after shooting thousands of rounds on the Glock magazines they will eventually wear out a little bit. <clears throat> we'll take a look at the rails real quick. The Glock has one slot right here. The M&P actually has three so depending on what accessory you put on you can position it maybe depending on the accessory closer to the trigger guard or further away than the Glock but most lights come with different types of adapters so you'll be able to position the light closer or further away from the trigger guard on the Glock. The trigger guard on the M&P is a little bit more rounded off and it doesn't really have an undercut. The Glock trigger guard is not rounded off. It does have a little bit of texture right there. But I have a light there anyway, so I never put my finger there. I did uh, make this undercut right here a little bit larger. But uh, when it's stock, it does have a little bit of an undercut. The MEP doesn't really have that much of an undercut. It would be nice if it did have an undercut because this is a compact model. And I could get my hand up there a little bit closer, but it works fine. Depending on the position of your hand, if you have a light, some people do like to put their finger in that slot right there so it can help them push down right here. Um, either way works, so I really don't have a preference. They both work just fine. We'll go on to the triggers right now. I'll show you the Glock trigger. The Glock trigger, you will have some pre-travel and you will feel the firing pin plunger safety being disengaged in the pre-travel. You get to a firm wall and it breaks pretty fast. The reset is strong and it's audible and tactile so you can hear it and feel it which is definitely nice. The MMP pre-travel is a little bit lighter. You will also feel your firing pin plunger safety being disengaged and when you reach the wall it's a little bit further back on the MMP compared to the Glock and the wall is a little bit lighter on the M&P, <clears throat> but the reset is not as strong and it's not as audible or tactile. The reason the M&P trigger is a little bit lighter is because your firing pin in your M&P is fully cocked. Your Glock firing pin is only half cocked and when you pull the trigger it is cocking your firing pin fully before releasing it. So that's one reason why the pre-travel and wall is a little bit lighter on the M&P and the M&P trigger is definitely a little bit better though the Glock Gen 5 trigger is perfectly adequate and I can shoot both of them just fine. The ergonomics might be a little bit better on the M&P depending on who you ask. I really don't care. They both feel fine and I do not choose my gun by how it feels in my hand when I'm just holding it. What matters is when you're out there shooting it. So I do recommend that you try out both these pistols before you buy them. If you have a local range near you, you can go there and hopefully they have both these pistols for rent or maybe even other pistols you can try out and see what works for you. Because if you take 10 new shooters or just shooters in general and you give them both these guns, half of them will shoot the M&P better, the other half will shoot the Glock better. When you buy the M&P, you will get two magazines. The Glock, you will get three magazines. But it equals out because you only get plastic sights on the Glock and you get metal sights on the M&P. When you buy the Glock, you will get a plastic Glock case. When you buy the M&P, you will only get a box and you will get the back straps. You will also get two little extensions you can use if you buy the 17 round magazines. So it will extend the, uh, the grip out a little bit, which is a nice touch and it's pretty cool that they offer that. And both of them obviously come with the plates and the optic screws. They both are great shooters and have a very low bore axis. I can run both these pistols very fast and very accurately. The M&P might be set up a little bit better right out of the box since it has upgraded sights and the trigger is a little bit better, but that's all subjective based on 
who you ask. Honestly, I recommend both these pistols. If I put it in a new shooter's hand, sometimes they do shoot the M&P pistol a little bit better. There are holster options available for both these pistols. Both of them have a lot of aftermarket support. There is a little bit more aftermarket support when it comes to aftermarket parts for the Glock just because it's been around a little bit longer and it is a little bit more popular and a little bit more common. When it comes to replacement OEM parts, they are honestly about the same. Sometimes you can find certain parts cheaper for the M&P though because if you do shoot these guns a lot, I do recommend changing out things like recoil springs and firing pin springs after, you know, 5,000 rounds or something like that. Just look at the maintenance schedule on the gun and you will know. But if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment. I do recommend both these pistols. I am carrying the Glock right now, but that will probably change. I do have a metal CNH precision plate coming in from my M&P, and when I get that, I might actually start carrying the M&P. But nonetheless, I, I love both these pistols, and they both have strengths and weaknesses. So if you have any questions, drop a comment. That'll be it.